Hello students. In today's video, we are going to study pharmacology of anti-leprotic drugs. So, let's first define leprosy. Leprosy is a chronic, curable, infectious disease. Leprosy mainly causes uh, skin lesions uh, or we can say skin wounds and it damages the nerves of the body. Now, as we all know, nerves are responsible for sensation. Now, leprosy is caused by bacteria, Mycobacterium leprae. Now, leprosy is a communicable disease and it spreads from infected to a healthy person. Now, when an infected person coughs, or sneezes or talks, the droplets of saliva carrying Mycobacterium leprae are expelled in the air. Now these droplets are called as droplet nuclei. Now inhalation of these infected droplet nuclei transmit the disease. Now main symptoms of uh, leprosy. Now most important is the discoloration of the skin. So, light colored or red colored patches are produced on the skin. Uh, now, as the disease causes uh, damage to the nerves, another important symptom is the reduced sensation or numbness. Numbness is a complete loss of sensation. So, if the numbed area gets injured, the person does not realize that. Then another symptom is the muscle weakness. Uh, especially in the hands and feet. Now, WHO classifies uh, leprosy as a posse bacillary leprosy and multi bacillary leprosy. Now, posse bacillary leprosy is characterized by 1 to 5 skin lesions. Now, here the patient has few bacilli, either no nerve or only one nerve is affected. Uh, skin smear is found to be negative. Now, leprosy uh, is treated by a number of drugs. Leprosy cannot be treated by a single drug. So, multi-drug treatment therapy is given for 6 months for the treatment of posse bacillary leprosy. Now, in multi bacillary leprosy, 6 or more than 6 skin lesions are seen. Patient has a large number of bacilli. More than one nerve is affected. Skin smear is found to be positive and multi-drug therapy is given for 12 months. So, this is in brief on leprosy. Uh, now, let's classify anti-leprotic drugs used in the treatment of leprosy. Now, anti-leprotic drugs are classified in six categories. Now, first category is of sulfone. It includes uh, the drug Dapson. Now, Dapson is diamino diphenyl sulfone, in short DDS. Now, second category is of uh, phenazine derivative. Now, clofazimine drug belongs to this category. Now, third category includes anti-tubercular drugs. Now, these drugs are also active against uh, mycobacterium leprae. And these are rifampin and uh, acunamide. Now, fourth category includes fluoroquinolones, fluoroquinolones like uh, ofloxacin and moxifloxacin. Now, these drugs inhibit bacterial enzyme DNA kinase and topoisomerase 4. Thereby, they prevent replication of uh, bacterial DNA and produce bactericidal effect. Now, fifth category is of uh, tetracycline. Now, only one tetracycline Minocycline is active against Mycobacterium leprae. Now, sixth category is of macrolide antibiotic. Only one macrolide clarithromycin is effective against the leprosy bacteria. Now, in multi drug treatment of leprosy, three drugs are used uh, Dapsol, Clofazimine, and Rifampin. So, let's discuss pharmacology of uh, these three important drugs. Now, our first anti-leprotic drug is Dapson. Now, Dapson is laprostatic drug. So, it does not kill but it inhibits the growth of uh, Mycobacterium leprae. Now, Dapson is chemically related to sulfonamide and it has the same mechanism of action as that of sulfonamide. Now, very important to understand here is this that bacteria synthesize their own folic acid 
and para amino benzoic acid in short paba is a precursor to synthesize uh, folic acid now this figure shows synthesis of uh, folic acid in bacteria and its uh, metabolic pathway now paba combines with pteridine an enzyme dihydroteroate synthase catalyzes this reaction and dihydroteroic acid is produced now dihydroteroic acid combines with glutamate to produce dihydrofolic acid and enzyme dihydrofolate reductase converts dihydrofolic acid to tetrahydrofolic acid now this tetrahydrofolic acid is very important this tetrahydrofolic acid is required by the bacteria for the synthesis of purines and pyrimidines which are further required for the synthesis of dna so folic acid is essential for the synthesis of dna now dapson dapson is a structural analog of paba that means the structure of dapson is similar to that of uh, to that of the structure of paba so dapson itself gets incorporated in place of paba and this prevents the synthesis of folic acid now in addition to this dapson also inhibits the enzyme dihydroteroate synthase so this also prevents the synthesis of folic acid in bacteria so this is the mechanism by which uh, dapson inhibits synthesis of folic acid in mycobacterium leprae and produce laprostatic effect uh, now some important pharmacokinetic features of dapson now dapson is completely absorbed on oral administration its half life is variable but often it's uh, more than 24 hours now dapson is widely distributed in the body and it is concentrated in the leparomatous skin lesions muscle liver and kidneys now dapson is metabolized in the liver dapson is acetylated and dapson is also conjugated to produce glucuronoid and sulfate conjugates now very important to uh, understand here is this that uh, these metabolites they are passed in the bile and from the uh, when they are passed in the bile they reach the intestine now instead of getting excreted from the intestine these metabolites are again reabsorbed in the portal circulation and they reach the liver so dapson gets accumulated in the body uh, as it undergoes anterohepatic circulation now dapson is uh, excreted in the urine now adverse effects of uh, dapson the most common adverse effect of dapson is the mild hemolytic anemia now it occurs due to the oxidizing property of dapson now hemolytic anemia occurs more often in patients with glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency then uh, gastric uh, intolerance to dapson is manifested as nausea and anorexia anorexia is the loss of appetite now uh, dapson also causes um, uh, methemoglobinemia now oxidation of iron in the heme group of hemoglobin produces methemoglobinemia now unlike hemoglobin methemoglobin cannot carry oxygen now another important uh, adverse effect of dapson is the sulfone syndrome now it is a hypersensitivity reaction to the drug dapson and it occurs 4 to 6 weeks after starting therapy with dapson now this sulfone syndrome is characterized by fever then malaise that is feeling of illness lymph node enlargement exfoliative dermatitis that is inflammation of the skin surface jaundice and anemia now if it occurs uh, then dapson treatment should be stopped and corticosteroids with other supportive therapies should be given to the patient now another adverse effect is uh, phototoxicity and hypermelanosis 
Now it can also produce uh, central nervous system side effects like uh, headache and mental symptoms. So this is the pharmacology of Dapson. Now another uh, important anti-leprotic drug is the clofazimine. Now clofazimine is leprostatic. It also inhibits growth of mycobacterium lepre and it is also anti-inflammatory. Now let's discuss mechanism of action of clofazimine. Now as we all know DNA is double stranded. When two strands of DNA separate from each other they are called as stamplets and this is necessary for DNA replication. Now clofazimine interferes with the template function of DNA in mycobacterium lepre. Now clofazimine also alters uh, structure and transport functions of uh, bacterial cell membrane. Now in addition to this as we all know that ATPs are generated by mitochondrial electron transport chain. Now clofazimine causes disruption of mitochondrial electron transport chain in the bacteria. So this is the mechanism of action of clofazimine. Now, a very important characteristic of uh, clofazimine, dapson-resistant mycobacterium lepre also respond to clofazimine. Now, pharmacokinetics, 40 to 70 percent of uh, drug administered orally is uh, absorbed. Then, clofazimine accumulates and it gets deposited as uh, needle-shaped crystals in many tissues including subcutaneous fat. So that means clofazimine uh, forms needle shaped crystals and these crystals they get accumulated in body tissues. Uh, it also uh, penetrates poorly in the cerebrospinal fluid and it has a half life uh, that is very long. It has a very long half life of 70 days. Uh, now let's understand adverse effects of uh, clofazimine. First, uh, adverse effects of uh, clofazimine on the skin. Now clofazimine causes uh, reddish black discoloration of the skin, especially on the exposed part of the body surfaces like face and the hands. So the color of affected skin area changes from normal to reddish black in color. Then it can also cause discoloration of hair. It can also cause discoloration of body secretions like uh, saliva, tears. Another problem is the dryness of skin. Uh, and because of the dryness of skin, there is itching also. Now it can also cause uh, acne form eruptions uh, where acne like uh, bumps are formed on the face, chest and other parts of the body. It can also cause uh, phototoxicity and uh, pigmentation of uh, conjunctiva of the eye. Now, in addition to this, clofazimine also causes gastrointestinal symptoms. Now, early symptoms occur due to the irritative effect of the drug. Now, these symptoms are nausea, anorexia, then abdominal pain, intermittent loose stools, then late symptoms can also occur. Now late symptoms occur due to the deposition of clofazimine crystals in the intestinal submucosa. Then uh, clofazimine should be avoided during pregnancy and in patients with liver and kidney damage. So this is the pharmacology of clofazimine. Now another very important anti-leprotic drug is a rifampin. Now very important to remember that rifampin is the first line tuberculosidal drug. It kills mycobacterium tuberculosis. It also kills mycobacterium lepre. Now when clinical doses of rifampin are given, it kills 99.99% .99 of mycobacterium lepre bacilli within 3 to 7 days. And the skin lesions also start regressing by 2 months. Now, it is a very important component of uh, multi-drug treatment therapy of uh, leprosy 
and uh, rifampin shortens overall duration of treatment and it also prevents development of uh, resistant bacteria. Uh, now let's uh, understand mechanism of action of rifampin. Now rifampin inhibits a bacterial DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. Now this enzyme reads DNA so that RNA uh, could be synthesized. Now inhibition of uh, this enzyme inhibits the synthesis of uh, bacterial RNA. Further, there is inhibition of synthesis of bacterial proteins. And this prevents growth and multiplication of bacteria and thus the bacteria gets killed. So this is the mechanism of action of rifampin. Then adverse effects of rifampin. Now hepatitis is the main adverse effect of rifampin. Now rifampin causes characteristic orange red to orange color of body fluids like urine, saliva, tears etc. Now this is harmless but the patient should be informed about the about this adverse effects prior to starting the therapy now in addition to this rifampin can also cause minor reactions it can cause cutaneous skin reactions uh, characterized by flushing that is redness of the skin pruritus that is itching then it can produce flu like symptoms uh, characterized by chills fever etc then abdominal symptoms uh, like nausea vomiting now here uh, one uh, very important thing uh, we should uh, know and we should understand about uh, rifampin is this that rifampin causes or rifampin induces rapid killing of uh, leprosy bacteria and this releases large quantities of uh, mycobacterium uh, antigens so uh, rifampin should not be given uh, if the patient is suffering from erythemia nodosum leprosum or if the patient is suffering from reversal reaction because these are these both are hypersensitivity reactions and these are caused due to the release of antigens from the killed bacteria so administration of uh, rifampin can further worsen the situation then uh, rifampin should not be administered in patients with hepatic or renal dysfunction. So this is the pharmacology of rifampin. Now as already discussed, multi-drug therapy of leprosy, for the uh, multi-drug therapy of leprosy, three drugs are used. And these are rifampin, dapson and clofazimine. Now in multi-bacillary leprosy, treatment is for 12 months. While treatment of posse-bacillary leprosy is of 6 months. So this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, anti-leprotic drugs. Please note, information provided in this video is only for academic informative purpose. For use of anti-leprotic -lep uh, drugs or for the treatment of leprosy, consult your physician. And if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.